Hi folks, and welcome to the Meaningful Money Podcast. This is session number 329. This is the podcast dedicated to helping you put your finances in order. My name is Pete Matthew, and I'm going to share with you everything you need to know and everything you need to do to secure your financial future. I'm here to help you make sense of money. Here we go. Great to have you with me. Uh, I feel a bit fraudulent telling you this, but I know I had a fantastic holiday, even though I'm saying this before I've gone. <laughs> right Today, I'm chatting with my good friend, Justin King. He's a fellow financial planner, most decidedly one of the good guys, right? More than most advisors. He has a passion for spreading the word of, about the power of financial planning, in his case, specifically to retirees. He wants to spread that message far more widely than just his local clients. Remind you of anyone, does he? (laughs) After the conversation with Justin, obviously I'll look at a review that's been left, talk about what we're gonna be discussing next week. But before all that, remember, this podcast continues to be brought to you with the help of my friends at Seven Investment Management. They've been helping me out here since the spring of 2011. Absolutely could not have done this without them. So I'm deeply grateful. Please do check out what they're up to and say hi and thank you. They're at 7im.co.uk. That's the number 7im.co.uk. Go check them out. Yeah, Justin King and I are very much of the same mind. And his Retirement Cafe initiative is a multi-level, multifaceted approach to sharing financial education with his specific market, just as Meaningful Money is for mine. So I invited Justin on the show so that more people could learn about what he's doing. So this is a blatant plug for what he's doing because I think it's fantastic and definitely worth you knowing about. So remember, notes and links and stuff, they're at the show notes, meaningfulmoney.tv slash session 329. That's meaningfulmoney.tv slash session 329. Here's my conversation with Justin King. Well, it's my joy to welcome back my good friend, Justin King. Uh, Justin, how you doing, my friend? Are you well? Very well, Pete. Always good to see you. Yeah, yeah, I knew, man. We haven't seen each other in person for quite a while, actually. It's because no, a... we used to see each other a bit on the conference circuit, but yeah, um, I yeah. I've become some something of a hermit. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> when you live in this part of the world, well, you know, try not to get out of it too often if I can help it. So, mate, it was it's incredibly. It's four and a half years since you were on the show. It's back in November 2014 with Martin Bamford, our mutual friend, wow. um, talking about the book that you co-produced, co-author with him, and that was. Um, Ready, steady, retire, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's right. going back a bit. So let's just have a bit of a reminder who you are, what it is you do, and you know what you're what you're up to right now. So, um, like yourself, Pete, I'm a chartered financial planner, certified financial planner um, uh, in Christchurch in Dorset. So uh, it's kind of the home of retirees in the <laughs> UK. <laughs> We've got a higher popu- highest population anywhere else in the UK. Um, so therefore I advise, you know, I'm a financial planner and I advise a lot of retirees. That's, that's the nature of our business. So it wasn't too difficult to work out what to specialize in. Um, you know, it, it, and that's what we do. So, uh, you know, I've got my own firm, MFP wealth management, which, which provides retirement advice. Yeah, I do. What does MFP stand for? Well, it's actually, we rebranded it. It's actually um, My Financial Planner Limited, which is where we started in the first place. And, and um, we, we're, all, we're always really around financial planning. You know, like yourself, we, you know, the, we're not all about product sales. It's not about trying to, you know, sell someone something, you know, another thing, which has been what the, you know, the industry or profession, whatever you want to call it, has done over the years. And we've always like, let's start with a financial plan. The problem is when we did a little bit of market research after, I don't know, maybe 12, 18 months of, st- of launching the firm under my financial planner, we found that people just thought we were an online offering. Oh, okay. That's interesting, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yeah, very interesting. So who knows where that'll go? Because I might, you know, I, I may reinvigorate that brand, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. But, um, so the MFP is out of the my financial planner and the wealth management really is just trying to describe a little bit more about exactly what we do. Yeah, yeah, nicely done. I actually, I, I knew that before asking you a question, but I only knew when I was looking at your website last night, I thought, ah, my financial planner now, I know. I figured it was, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's always reasons, isn't there, for, yeah, for, yeah. for initials very often. Cool. So, uh, Justin, you're here to talk about um, the Retirement Cafe, which is this fantastic mm. initiative that you've been behind for what, a couple of years now, 18 months? Well, the, the live events, I think, more like 
three years no probably. Wow, well, time yeah. really does yeah. go on. So tell me, you know, what the initial inspiration was for the retirement cafe for the live events initially. Well, you know, as any small business, I suppose, um, serving its community, I realised that uh, who I needed to serve best. I, who was my ideal client? I mean, and any any business owner listening to this is should should always, I think, try and work out who do they best serve, who do they give the greatest value to, um, and we give the greatest value to people who've got relatively complex problems. I suppose they've they've you know they've got to retirement, they may have amassed quite a few different pension schemes, um, they may have had periods abroad, they might have a business to sell, they've they've got quite a lot of stuff going on. Elderly parents, children of university age. Um, you know, lot, as I say, complexity, um, what I call kind of expensive questions. Um, and therefore, we can demonstrate the value of our advice much better um, to those people than maybe people with kind of more simpler questions. Mm. Um, but when I was advising people, I'd look at snippets of the stuff that I do and just go, well, that's so applicable to everybody. Mm. You know, um, and and therefore, if I'm only serving this kind of affluent client with complex problems, I'm not serving a huge amount of part of my community. Mm. And therefore, and there seems to be something wrong. You know, I came from fairly simple, humble backgrounds. And, and, and you kind of go, hold on, why should the preserve of advice be only for affluent people? Surely that everyone should have access to the simple stuff. Yeah. Um, so how can I go out and deliver my advice, I suppose, on mass, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and also possibly not have the liability for actually giving specific advice. You yeah, know, as sure. soon as we put pen to paper, um, or we're on the hook, you know, or we're on the hook for it. Mm. We, we, that's a fair comment. We, we, yeah. We're professionals. We've got professional insurance. You know, but if we give advice to somebody, then we we can be sued over it. And I get that. That's the mm-hmm. same as any profession. But it still doesn't mean that we couldn't give information out like you do with Meaningful Money, give information out to my community. Now, a lot of people are not going to hook, hook into YouTube or maybe if not listen yeah, to sure. a podcast, or, um, but they would come to a live event and they would come and talk to experts. Mm. So if I could kind of put the events together and do it on a community front, first of all, yes, it would give me a bit of more name awareness in my community, but it would be doing some good stuff. And then people who would become regular people would just become a bit more aware about, I don't know, the state pension or yeah, sure. um, or inheritance tax or whatever, you know. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant idea, actually. Such a simple idea in many ways, but it takes somebody with some vision to execute it. So the live events, what do they look like? What's, what form do they take? And, you know, what just sort of take us through uh, a typical so, retirement cafe? So we, we generally hire quite a nice hotel. Nice. <laughs> um, and we generally pick up, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning. So it, it's not, they're not, it's not premium time for a hotel anyway. No, sure. so 10 o'clock, we get a nice room relatively cost effectively in, in town. We've got one overlooking the harbor. We've got one by the Christchurch Priory. We're doing one in a few weeks time over in um, Sandbanks, kind of Camford Cliffs area, a beautiful venue there. Yes. We hire a room. We put on coffee, tea, cake. Uh, it's a retirement cafe event. I, I get in some experts, depending on what topic I want to talk about. There's always someone who knows more about the topic than me. Always. Yep. <laughs> you know, um, you know I'm, I'm probably a kind of a general practitioner in the medical world, if you were getting yeah, yeah. an analogy, of knowing enough about what retirees' issues are around financial planning. But if it comes to you know, wills, mm-hmm. then I need to get a will expert in. I need to get a, a lawyer in who specializes in that type of work. Mm-hmm. So I, I get in the experts. And then, in essence, I do a little bit of chat. Um, and then I introduce the expert. And then we just get people to ask questions. You know, what are your concerns? What do you want to know? And they can talk directly to the, um, the expert at the front. Um, and the beauty is the rest of the audience hear mm. what the question was and what the response was because people have generally got the same questions. Absolutely, yeah. And it's very informal. It's coffee keeps, keeps being served. They eat a nice bit of cake and um, we have a chat and it lasts kind of 90 minutes to two hours. Um, they all mingle with each other and, nice. and, um, and, and off they go. Yeah. Great stuff. So what's the sort of uh, feedback? been like what you know the good people of Christchurch and surrounding areas so what sort of things are they saying about it well really good I mean I think there was initially the one of the reasons I branded it the retirement cafe was I wanted it not to be about selling financial services you know I think we're all a little bit cynical aren't we um (laughs) about 
<laughs> about financial service. You know, they're only putting yeah. on a free. They're putting on a free event. You know, what are they going to flog me? And it was never about that. It was like, in fact, I wanted to put a guarantee up that you couldn't buy anything. Yeah, you know? sure. exactly. Because <laughs> this wasn't the purpose. It wasn't the, you know, if people then went, actually, I need to get that lawyer because he's just said something to me that is particularly relevant, they can call him up. You know, I had no problem with the professional kind of giving out some cards, but that was always done specifically afterwards. It mm. was never actually any anything happening. So there was a little bit of cynicism, I suppose, initially. But um, I think as, as the events have rolled on, you know, we've covered everything from care to, as I say, pensions, to plans of attorney, to inheritance tax, to uh, living well, um, you know, finding a care home, yeah, um, dementia, um, all the stuff, um, health, welfare, yeah, all the stuff that probably, well, I find, I'm sure you find, is kind of pre- prevalent in mm. people's minds as they enter into retirement. What have been the subjects you think which have been sort of most well-received or most most questions get asked about? What are most sort of retirees worried about, do you think? The dimension is a big thing. Yeah, I bet. Um, you know, even if, you know, even if you're, if you're worried about getting it and then, if you have had a close family member or someone you know who's suffered from some type of dementia, you just know what effect it has on that individual and also the rippling effect it has on the rest of the family. Um, and it's huge. And, and, it, and it's a real that 3 a.m. moment. Yeah. Sadly, there's very little we can do about it. Um, uh, but there is also a lot you can do about it. I, I don't want to, you know, if we can look after ourselves well, we can eat well and we can stay active and use our minds um, and be part of a community, you know, it, it's huge. Help, yeah. But, but you know, I think we're a long way off um, a cure for it from what I gather. So the live events going from strength to strength, are they, what, quarterly, something like that? Well, we, we, we kind of we ran a course a little bit and then I kind of was like, okay, I need, they need a bit of a refresh. Um, yeah, I've covered most of that. the topics. And then I thought, well, okay, so w- what's going on here? I know that all the stuff that we've covered is well, and this is, I suppose, where my podcast came out. It was actually, how do I get a bigger reach mm-hmm. with the stuff that we're doing? Um, and how can I talk to more diverse people? How can I get more experts in front of more people? Yeah, and, you know, it was fine to run the events of the big events to get local speakers in to talk about their stuff. But, you know, some of the people I've interviewed from the podcast have been much more diverse, I suppose. And I wouldn't have been able to get them down to little old Christchurch, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, I'm delighted that that it's become a podcast. And the one thing I love about this medium so much is that there is an audience, no matter how narrow the niche. Now, obviously, retirement is not exactly a narrow niche. It's uh, <laughs> you know it comes to us all, hopefully, or most of us anyway. So, but I love the fact that there is now, you know, you've got Andy Hart talking about behavioral finance. Uh, yeah. You've got Chris Budd talking about financial well-being, and now there's a retirement cafe specifically serving the needs primarily of UK retirees and I, I think it's really exciting so what you know was it just greater reach or sort of more and deeper content that was the sort of push behind you uh going yeah, to the I, podcast? Wanted, I, I, I think we'd covered and i, I think we will cover again because we were often repeats and we're doing it in different locations the live events are i, I can cover the i can cover the big chunks of the chapters of the retire the concerns retirees have um but kind of once I've done that, unless I go back and repeat them, and I have done some some repeating, if I wanted to expand that out into um, in, into all the, I suppose I'd done all the main courses as as the yeah, retirement yeah. cafe kind of live events, and now I wanted to do lots of starters and and, and sweets, you know. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to look at all the <laughs> yeah all the little bits that yeah. are around retirement. You know, some people are really into cruising. Yeah, some totally. people are. Some people will want to do, you know, the retirement is this great opportunity of I'm, I'm going to learn the piano. I'm going to learn to paint. I'm going to do the stuff that I never had time to do. Um, um, and then there's the whole thing around um, community of, of uh, uh, charity and voluntary work and let's keeping people uh, connected with each other. Mm. There's just so many facets to this. Um, that that that's really why I wanted to expand it out. Do people ask you if you're going to run out of stuff to talk about? They ask me that all the time. It cracks me yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm never ever in a million years going to run out of stuff to talk about. <laughs> no, and and I haven't. I mean, you know, I've covered some big stuff on the money topic so far, but um, 
but I haven't really, I haven't really got down to those intricacies of, mm. of retiree financial planning. Yeah. Um, and you know, the big concern of how do we, st- how do we make sure we don't run out of money? Well, have you had Abraham on yet? <laughs> yes, I have. have you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's a, always a popular guest and just a powerhouse. And there, there is an infinite number of things to talk about, and particularly if you take it wider than just the finance as well. Have you done one on cruising? No, not yet. I've, I'll uh, send you a link to a friend of mine who runs a site all about cruising, and he's oh, brilliant, he's brilliant. brilliant. He, I have got great. in my in our list. I have got um, the entertainment manager oh. of uh, Cunard. Oh come um, on, fantastic! So, That's a bit. So of a he's the entertainment director of Cunard. So he's going to come on and talk nice. about it from his perspective. And he started right from the um, right. From, he, I think he was a dancer in the beginning, oh, you know. Wow. So he he's gone all the way up through the ranks. So um, wow. I'm looking forward to hoping to. Uh, and then we've got another client who used to book the speakers on oh, cruise ships. On. So again, I'm hoping to get her her on to talk about again her experiences. You know. Yeah, you're hoping to get booked. <laughs> to go <laughs> on some cruise ships yourself that that'd be good wouldn't it yeah, yeah life. talk about a captive market you have to take on some uh some more staff to cope with it that's what i seem to have to do all the time what do you reckon you have got out of the whole retirement cafe exercise just professionally for mfp and also for you personally do you think um so professionally, I'm just much better informed. I mean, you know, I thought I knew about it, but I'm the deeper and deeper I go into all the aspects of listening to these experts and not no, as well listening to the questions mm. and then listening to the responses and seeing and, and just, you know, having that ability to not be providing the advice, I think, at the live events, especially it's kind of like, you know, um, OK, so that's one of your real worries. Yes. And I can see the the human dynamic with stuff. You know, every family's different. And every family's got its own challenges and problems around health and welfare and money um, issues, I suppose. Yeah. You know, wh- what point you hand it on, what point don't you? And seeing the responses from the different professionals and how they deal with stuff. Um, you know, one of our, one of our most popular um, speakers was um, a chap on, uh, well, he's an undertaker. <laughs> a really humorous undertaker and some of the stories he came out with were just like <laughs> i can imagine amazing so again he'll, he'll hopefully come on the podcast and again um you know to provide different people different it's different perspective isn't it yeah it's i know for me you know doing this exercise over nearly 10 years now it's refined my thinking i'm a lot more opinionated about stuff than i used to be i feel like i have quite strong views on lots of things and you know obviously i have a platform to preach about them um and that that's benefited me massively because the logical sort of overflow for that is then that that impacts my clients and the way that i advise them and you know we we're a lot uh, tighter and more defined as a firm about how we advise our clients which i, I think has been good um and it, you do get to meet some really interesting people when you're getting expert guests on don't you it does. And I also think that, you know, the benefit of having taking advice is, about, is, is actually getting answers to the questions that you didn't ask. Hmm. Yeah. You know, you know, this kind of the saying of, you know, um, you, you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> yeah, don't <run laughs> um, well, don't so, so if you're always, um, and you have to, you just have to accept in this world that we are only partially informed on everything yeah. that we do we yeah. it, it's impossible even even the top experts if you go in for you know you go in for an operation they're, they're always going well it kind of should work and it you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. usually does yeah. um and, and so you suddenly to realize that actually when you're dealing with your own financial situation having someone else's different perspective and go do you know what I know you might not have thought about this, but what about and ask them that further question that possibly that you heard someone else ask mm. and then and then it, because you suddenly think that's relevant to them and then they can consider something from a different perspective. Mm. And, and, and I think that's the greatest benefit of advice is that they can suddenly get a different perspective on it rather than their own. They're not tunnel thinking, but we're all we're all guilty of, of you know, running down a running around down a track. Yeah, yeah. And not seeing a different perspective. Yeah, confirmation bias in action is, you know, what we sort of seek out things which confirm how what we already think about things. And 
the benefit of uh, professional advice is always, hopefully, that you'll get an independent opinion, um, particularly from a financial planning perspective as opposed to product sales, of course, which isn't really advice in the true sense of the word. But it's, yeah, you should be working with professional who can challenge you when necessary, yeah. hold you to account, uh, remind you of what you said a year ago because they've kept good notes and say, right, how are we doing on that? And um, and just, yeah, you know, challenge thinking, which I think is really important. So what's... What's the vision, bud? Where's uh, the retirement cafe going to be in three, five years' time? Well, I mean, I, I, I think I would like to build up our Facebook community. I think we would like to build out the knowledge on money. Mm. You know, the more people we've got, we know we've got this wall of tsunami of people entering retirement. Yeah. And we know it's complicated for most people. And so the more people who are more informed and make better financial decisions, or better health decisions, or better community decisions, voluntary decisions, um, everything, um, and staying connected, creating a community that actually allows people to get access to the valuable information that we've got, or we have the privilege of accessing through our professional network. If I can spread that stuff out without a cost to people, except for their time that they take to listen or watch, I think that just be remarkable. I uh, I think about this a lot. I think you know that the jury's out yet, and I think uh, about the impact that the internet will have. And I think as you know, there's a whole generation coming up now. I quite often think of this in um, like environmental terms. You know, you've got a whole generation. My 19 year old daughter doing a zoology degree. You know, she's transformed how we think about plastic at home and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, there's a whole generation of people like her. Likewise, there's a whole generation coming up who are better informed about finances, less likely to just fall into debt by default and, you know, actually sort of think that through and learn how to use debt if they're going to or learn how to be intentional about saving and investing. And I think, you know, it might take 50 years or 40 years or whatever for that to really bear out on the economy of the nation and the world. But, um, it'd be fascinating, you know, if I'm spared to get to sort of uh, 2075 and I'm 100 years old and um, just see what impact 75 years of the internet will have had by then. Um, so it's great that you're doing your part. I and, mean, you know, I love the fact that we have a, uh, a platform now that we can spread great information about absolutely crucial uh, subjects. So uh, more power to you, my friend. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And, well, and you, you, you've led by example, Pete. So. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Listen, man, where can folks find out more about the Retirement Cafe and everything that you're doing at MFP? So Retirement Cafe has got its own website, the retirementcafe.co.uk, where you'll see our um, uh, weekly updates for the podcast, who's on and the past issues, etc. And you can leave some notes there or questions or anything like that. Um, mfpwealthmanagement.co.uk is our website um, you can find me on Twitter at Justin King uh, CFP um, and um, yeah so just just subscribe on the Retirement Cafe if you want to be yeah. kept up to date with the live events or and everyone's welcome and there's no cost to ever attending I have no intention of ever charging for those um, so you know wherever you are if you want to turn up then please do just got to register on Eventbrite which is um, yeah. pretty easy Fantastic Justin thanks man keep up the good work and uh, thank you for joining me today Thanks, Pete. Always a pleasure. There you go. Hope you enjoyed that. My thanks again to Justin for joining me. Definitely check out what he's up to. All the links are in the notes as usual, meaningfulmoney.tv slash session 329. Can you believe I've done 329 episodes of this podcast, not including 5-Minute Friday? So definitely check out what Justin's up to, meaningfulmoney.tv slash session 329. Here's a review from Adam, uh, from Adam Noble from Bolton. Uh, I know that because that's what he put as his headline on the review, Adam Noble from Bolton. Uh, being 29, I'm in your exact target audience. This was left around the time of the millennial finance season, so I'm guessing you're a, a millennial, Adam. I'm right at the beginning of my financial planning journey, having spent many years in a poor financial state due to poor decisions in my early 20s. We've all been there, Adam. I'm excited, having learned so much from you already in such a small space of time. I'm almost annoyed at myself I didn't find your podcast sooner. I've set in place your tips for budgeting, and I'm so focused to really spend 2019 setting a foundation for myself to progress even further in the future. Thank you for taking your time and efforts to help people in the way you are. I'm certainly doing my best to get more people on board and spread your name. Adam, thank you, sir. It's really important we get this in as many people's hands as possible. So thank you for doing your part with that. If you want to do it, folks, then leave me a review. It's the easiest way. Obviously, tell your friends and family and your kids and your dog and everybody about this show, but Wherever you're listening to me, if you can leave a review, then do so, because it really helps. It keeps me near the top of the rankings. So 
If you're of an Apple persuasion, it's meaningfulmoney.tv slash iTunes. But anywhere, if it's Podbean or Spotify or whatever, if you can leave me a review, please take the time to do it. It really helps. It doesn't have to be long. Just a quick few words, a couple of lines. Really, really helps. Okay, next week's show is an absolute belter. Um, it's a show many of you have been asking me for over the past few months. Next week, I'm talking to none other than Barney Whiter, a.k.a. The Escape artist inarguably one of the best known voices for the fire movement here in the uk financial independence retire early definitely a prime mover in that space here in the uk i had a brilliant conversation with him i'm really looking forward to bringing it to you so that's next week uh, any questions on that or on today's show or whatever meaningfulmoney.tv slash ask pete if you want to actually you know i don't know if that still works anyway go to meaningfulmoney.tv and press the contact form i'll check that before next week that's it for this week folks hope you enjoyed it thank you so much check out me and barney wiser next week thank you to justin king for this week have a good week i'll talk to you soon